this morning. Amen. God bless you. Welcome to Apostolic Faith Church on the interweb. And, uh, amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Anybody got a smile out there hiding behind? Yeah, there's a few. Okay. I feel a little bit better now. Amen. I know everybody's smiling in the telephone there, so thank you. Ezekiel 41 verse 1 says afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house and behold waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward it's always a question of who do you call we I was at work the other day and the bathroom uh, there was water dripping out of the light fixture so I went and I asked the boss, do we need, I don't know if we need a plumber or an electrician, but we need something. Um, and so there was water, he said, flowing, the prophet said. The angel of the Lord brought the prophet to the house of God. And there was water flowing out from under the threshold of the door of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then he brought me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. All the east, north, south, and west, they were facing east. The water was flowing out of the temple toward the east. And the man had the line in his hand. It was a measuring line. And he went forth eastward and he measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me through the waters and the waters were to my ankles. And he measured again a thousand and brought me through the waters and the waters were to the knees. And he measured a thousand and brought me through and the waters were to the loins or up to his waist. Verse 5 says, Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. There is a river, the prophet saw, flowing out of the house of God. And in verse 12, We'll skip and read just verse 12. Ezekiel 47? 47. Oh, dear merciful heaven. Oh, my. Mathematical Oh, my heart. I can see this is going to go well. Ezekiel 47 in verse 1. I won't read it all to you again, but anybody in Ezekiel 47 now? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Let's look at verse 12. At verse 12, the conclusion of it all. See, I was, as some people would just say, I was just testing you. Yeah. See, yeah. If you so thank you, Brother Mark. Amen. And verse 12, and by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, this side and that side, every side, shall grow all trees for meat. And that just means food. They weren't trees that grew like actual, like a steak tree or something. It's a pork chop tree over here. It, was, it literally means it's, it's just food. Um, you, can, you can eat and harvest what's on those trees. Um, whose leaf shall not fade. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It doesn't mean you can't eat it. It just means you can't eat it all because right. there's too much. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. There's a whole lot of God yes. on this tree. Hallelujah. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. In other words, it won't even get old. Mm. You won't even get bored. Mm. My Lord. Amen. My Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. New fruit according to his months because their waters. This is why. This is why. This is why as you were all confused looking at chapter 41. This is why. <laughs> because the waters that water this tree Come on. came from the house of God. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. The waters that sustained this tree yeah. that was that was the life blood of this endless abundance came. They issued out of the sanctuary. Yeah. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat or for food and the leaf thereof for medicine. Yes. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. 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 There's healing in the water. There's healing in the water. There's victory in the water. In the flow that issues from the house of God. Could you close your eyes this morning and just picture that in your mind? The mighty house of God. The sanctuary of the Most High with a river flowing out full of His goodness. There is a flow that comes from heaven that originates high and far above us that is flowing through this house right now today. I'm preaching to us this morning. We need to get into the flow. God, help us today. Anoint us today. Lord, work in this house, in this service today for those who are here and those who cannot be, Lord. Let God, the mighty power of your presence flow into our lives and touch us and help us today. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord if you could this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 So, I think I shared this story once a long time ago, but I'm going to try it again because it's pretty funny. Um, so, actually, in, uh, in 2012, my wife and I celebrated our fifth anniversary. Um, so, that was in 2012. And so, on our fifth anniversary, we, uh, we went on a cruise. Um, we left out of Boston and went north to Canada. A uh, very exotic place, Canada. Uh, <laughs> Beyond exciting, uh, we were able, thankfully, to get our passports, and we got, got on the boat and went to Canada. So and that was in 2012, so we had to follow that up. So in 2013, on our sixth anniversary, um, I wanted to try and match that. You know, it was it was the biggest and best thing, really, we had ever done. Never done anything quite like that. So on our sixth anniversary, I said, honey, we're going to... We're going to do, I'm going to do the best I can to, to be right up there. So on our fifth anniversary, we went on a cruise to Canada. On our sixth anniversary, we, we rented a kayak in Harrisburg and floated down the Susquehanna River. So it was, it was, some would call that a sharp decline from a cruise ship to a kayak, but hey, it, at least it wasn't a canoe, you know, so, so we thank the Lord. Um. It was pretty awesome. It was in uh, it was in June. That's when our anniversary is. I got that pretty well in the open. Huh? It's, it's, it's taking some time, but I've learned it. Um, and this deal looked like it should be a lot of fun, right? We um, you go to City Island, and there's people there, and they let you rent their uh, seaworthy vessels, and they give you a paddle. They don't put you up the creek without a paddle. They actually give you a paddle for us. They gave us two uh, because there were two of us, and then they hooked the boat to the van and drug it up the river and pushed us out into the water. Amen. Basically said good luck. Um, <laughs> the water was a little high. It had rained a lot that spring, and, and uh, that was actually a good thing. It was good the water was high. Um, for most people, it wouldn't matter at all, but I don't know how to swim. I still don't. I didn't, I, I didn't then. I don't today. Um, but the water being high was actually good because it covered a bunch of the obstacles. The guy on the ride up was pointing out big rocks and things out in the river, and he's like, hey, out there, you kind of got to watch. And, you know, a lot of folks upset there. And like, oh, thanks. Um, and so we're in this high water, and, and the river isn't all that deep. If you're familiar with the Susquehanna River, it's kind of a wide river, not really a deep river. But it does have a defined current. It does, in fact, flow from the north to the south, and that there is, there is no debate. Um, even among political parties, everybody seems to agree which way that river is going. Um, and so it's it's just flowing gently i thought this is going to be a great relaxing ride kind of like a cruise ship that's what i'm trying to recreate and so um uh you know we had the kayak rented for several hours and it wasn't going to take that long from where they dumped us in the water to get back to where we were supposed to return the boat to um so i just figured calm relaxing ride we're going going with the current ideally <laughs> Should be easy. Just just relax. Have a good time. Unfortunately, the guy began to point out all of the interesting things about the river. If this island over here, that island over there, and the birds that dwell in the trees upon that island yonder, and uh, some are on this side of the river, and some are on the very far side of the river, some are in the middle. Um, and my wife likes birds. Uh -oh. um, 
And so he began to tell us stories about nesting birds and all the birds that are there. And it's still springtime and they're hatching and it's wonderful. You'll be able to hear the young and it'll be so great. Just make sure you don't miss this island. And, and none of them were off limits. It's like none of them were, were posted or no trespassing, no hunting signs, anything. You could stop, stop, stop at any of them you want, he said. Have a picnic lunch, he said. It'll be great fun, he said. It's a great time on the river. And so we climbed in, shoved off from shore, began to make our way uh, down river. Now, we had kayaked some before uh, here and there, but it was always in like lakes or ponds, nowhere with a defined current that was moving. This was our first time in the big river. Um, so it was a little different. Um, but we both had paddles, and so we began. The kayak paddles are the cool ones. They're like double barrel. They have one paddle on this side and one on that side, oh. so you kind of do that. You know, back and forth type thing. It's really, you know, makes you feel good about yourself the first five minutes or so. Um, <laughs> and so we made our way kind of out toward the middle, sort of, of the river. At least we were, you know, we were angling, angling back west. Um, and we got to the first island, like the first island. Um, and half the crew in the kayak wanted to stop, and the other half the crew in the kayak did not. <laughs> And so we stopped. <laughs> um, and uh, we had a great time on the island there. We walked around and saw it was muddy and there were a lot of bugs and not much else. We like, okay. And so we got back in the boat and uh, made our way downstream. But now, what we ran into, if you go across, you know, go up Route 81 and stop there in the middle of the river bridge and look around and see how close the islands are together. Well, that's where we ended up. And it's like, okay, we wanted to go around, we, I say we loosely, um, but we, part of us, wanted to go around, with all due respect to everyone involved in the story, uh, we wanted to go around all the islands that were there, which was relatively easy to do, except that they weren't like nicely staggered. They were like some of them right beside each other. So it was really cool to float down one side but then the suggestion came, well, why don't we go up, back up that way? We missed that island. And so now the gentle current that was carrying us downstream where we were supposed to go became quite an element of distress, for me in particular. Uh, and my relaxing cruise downstream turned into a frantic fight to get back upstream. And so I'm there and beginning to breathe more heavily. And my wife is looking up at the trees and saying, <laughs> the birds. I'm like, what birds? Bro. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really say that. Either. It's long enough ago. It doesn't matter now. I made it. Anyway. <laughs> because we got to see it all. Yes. Back and forth, up and down. And. So all of this, I say, is for this purpose to say what I learned that day is that it's much easier to go the same direction that things are flowing than it is to try and go against the flow. It is easier to get into something that's moving and just go with it than it is to try and turn and go back against it. Unless you're trying to stay married and celebrate your anniversary, then I understand. But otherwise, now my wife is a great driver. Great driver. Perfect driving record. If you put her in the front seat of a kayak and the world just goes wrong. It's, it's a whole, the, the physics and geometry and geography of the whole thing become overwhelming. And it's like, which side should I paddle on? And I said, just stop. Just let me do it. Just let me, let me do it. Because we're starting to spin. And, no, no, the other side. You're right. My right. And so, so, so that's what we did. She watched the birds. I paddled upstream. <laughs> what I know for sure is if you're rowing in water that has no flow in it, it's pretty easy to go any way that you want, yeah. pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But if you get into a body that's moving, you'll have the most success. If you get into something that's moving, you will have the most success. You will have the most success yeah. if you make up your mind to go the direction that the flow is going. Yeah. The current will help to carry you. Yeah. You can add something to it, but it really does most of the work yeah. on its own. Yeah. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Yeah. 
Amen. That's why I'm glad to be an apostolic Pentecostal. I'm glad to come into a church where I can find myself in a place that even maybe when everybody doesn't always feel like it all the time, there's, there's still, I know, going to be a little bit of something moving. And a lot of times there's a whole lot of something moving. And if I just get on board with what's going on, amen, there's a whole lot that's going to carry me. Friend, it doesn't take a whole lot. I just have to get in to what's going on and get into the flow of the Holy Ghost and realize I don't have to carry all of this myself. But there's a whole lot of God that's going to move me in the direction that I need to go. I'm preaching to somebody today. It's time to get out into the flow of this and let God begin to move you in a direction and for a distance that you've never gone before. Thank God for a church that isn't stagnant and rigid. But flowing and moving and changing and powerful. That was the kind of house of God that Ezekiel saw in chapter 47. Not 41. <laughs> there was something moving coming out of that place. It wasn't a church house bottled up inside of itself, but it was a church house, a sanctuary of God where the goodness flowed out from under the door. There was more than what could be contained on the inside. There was something on the inside that had an impact on the outside. I don't know what kind of church you prefer, but for me, that's the kind of house of God that I want to be part of, where there's more on the inside than what can be soaked up with those that are here. And there's something that flows and moves and issues forth out of the house of God because there's nothing that I on my own can do for this world, but there is something that flows from heaven through the house of God. And if I climb on board with that, there's no telling what God can do. There's power to be had in the flow. There's healing to be felt in the flow. There's anointing for your life in the flow of God's presence. There's joy unspeakable in the flow of the Holy Ghost. You can have it all. All you have to do is just get into it. Amen. And get carried away a little bit. Yes. The river begins in the house of God and flows outward like every other river, starting small and getting larger. That seems normal and logical. Rivers start small, they get bigger towards the end. At first, the prophet says the water close to the house of God was to the ankles. And the further he went from the house of God, the deeper it got. It came up to his knees and he went... He went 1,500 feet further, a cubit's about a foot and a half, so 1,000 cubits, 1,500 feet somewhere in there, we suspect. The further he went, the deeper he got. Yes. The further he yes. went, yes. the deeper he got. That's how it ought to be. Yes. That's how it ought to work. Finally, it became a river that he could swim in. What started out as a trickle in the house of God became a mighty river that could carry a great vessel. It became a great river that you could completely immerse yourself in, be wrapped up in, be lost in completely. We expect that. Because here, rivers run, and the further the river runs, the more tributaries run into it. Another river or stream over here runs into that and it adds to it and the flow gets larger and, and yeah. bigger and the river gets stronger. But in Ezekiel 47, you'll notice that there are no tributaries mentioned. Mm -hmm. The water doesn't... There's, there is no other source for this flow than the sanctuary of God, than the presence of God. Amen. But even still, the further it goes, the deeper it gets. Yes. We would expect it to do the opposite since there's nothing else flowing in. But in fact, with the way the presence of God works and the way the power of God works in our lives, when we agree with Him, when we flow with Him, the further we go with Him, the stronger He becomes in us. The further we walk with Him, the deeper His presence becomes in our lives. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying keep on walking with God. I'm saying get into the flow. I'm saying yield to yourself. Yield 
yourself Amen. to God Amen. in a way that you never had. Amen. And let the flow Amen. carry you away. Amen. A lot of times on Sundays we get in ankle deep and then we stroll outside, climb in our car, clean off our shoes from the ankle deep blessing that we were standing in, climb up in. Say that was a nice service and we head home. Amen. We change course before we experience the depth of what the flow has to offer in our life. The water wasn't deepest at the Sunday morning experience. It actually got deeper. It really didn't get really deep till about 6,000 feet out, a little over a mile away. Could it be that God is trying to show us that our deepest spiritual experience with Him, as awesome as it is at the altar, that is not intended to be the climax Amen. of our relationship Amen. with Him. Amen. But there are even deeper things to be found. That's right. There are even deeper things to be found. Now, a lot of times we get distracted. A lot of times we get drawn to the side. But friend, when we realize the opportunity that we have, if we stay in the flow, right. when we leave the house of God, That's right. listen, if the only place that God could work was right here, yeah. then why would we ever go anywhere else and why would we do anything else? Mm -hmm. yeah. But God didn't intend to be confined to this. And He did not intend our experience with Him to be confined here. He intended for us to come to the sanctuary of God. To find the source of that powerful flow and find the direction for our life. Ezekiel 47, like it or not, and get confused by it or not, there's a whole lot of direction in there. Right. North, south, east, and west, every other way. He's telling you there is direction to be found at the house of God. You can measure the direction for your life at the house of God. If you're not sure which way to turn, go and find yourself at the house of God and see what direction He's moving. If you want to know which way to go with your life, it can start at the house of God on a Sunday morning, but friend, it's intended to continue onward and outward from there. Amen. The flow that begins at a central house of worship does not end there. What you feel here is available in magnified proportion the further you go in your home, on your journey, in your circumstances, in the, in the, in the burden that you've been privately carrying, in the, in the trouble that you've been secretly dealing with and struggling through. Friend, there is depth of God available for you in the midst of all of that. If you will resist the urge to step out of the flow on a Tuesday morning, if you'll resist the urge to climb out on the shores on a Wednesday afternoon if you'll stay in this thing all week long every morning every evening Lord you said seek your face so your face I will seek the psalmist said if we could put ourselves ever in the flow of what God is doing you'll hear his voice like you've never heard him before you can call upon him and he'll answer you in your moment of need wherever you are You'll hear Him yeah. speaking to you. Friend, it's in the flow. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the flow. Yeah. Peter's empty boat was at the shore after a whole night of unproductive fishing. And Jesus said, it's too shallow here. It's time to get out in the deep. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll find what you've been looking for. Yeah. There's more to do, Peter, than just splash around and mend your nets. It's time to go into the deep. One man made this statement long ago. He said, you never hear of people front sliding in church. <laughs> it's only backsliding. <laughs> <laughs> One great old western writer said it this way about some folks that he had written about that lived in the high up Tennessee hills. And he said, they built the church at the bottom of the valley and the hills were so steep there was no way anybody could backslide. Amen. He started sliding anywhere. <laughs> You're going to church. So, come to the church in the valley. Hallelujah. 
And I agree mostly with this. If no one accidentally grows in God. Yeah. That's right. You really don't do it by accident. That's right. Right. You do not accidentally advance in the kingdom of God. Right. It will only come with effort. Yes. But you will accidentally end up yes. where you used to be. Right. Yes. Wow. Yes. You won't accidentally move forward. But you will accidentally become again who you once were if wow. you don't make a concerted That's right. effort yes. to move forward. That's right. yes. It's so easy to go backward. Yes. Forward is always into the unknown. Forward is always into that pioneering spirit of, of just reaching into a new day. You won't accidentally go forward. Unless, unless, unless you get in the flow. Right. Unless you get yourself in the current of God. Now, you've, you've got to do some things to keep your alignment correct. But once you're in the flow and you've got yourself aligned with God, you can go a whole lot more forward and a whole lot faster than what you ever thought you could. I said, if you get yourself aligned with God. See, a lot of folks have been struggling to get upstream for a long time when really what they need to do is turn around and go the other way because the way they're trying to go is the way that God doesn't want them to be. And they're struggling and they're, they're screaming at life and they're saying, I'm so frustrated and I don't understand and I don't always understand either, but what I've learned is this. Amen. If God's moving that way, I don't want to try and go that way. Because yes. hey. there's just too much trouble in that. Yeah. There's nothing back there that I lost yeah. that I need to go back and find. Yeah. But there is something in the direction of God yeah. that I want to lay hold of. Yeah. It takes some effort to keep your alignment. But my Lord, you can go fast in God. If you get lined up with the flow. If you get into the... To, if, if you accept the direction that He gives. And let yourself become comfortable with what you weren't comfortable with just because you decided you're not comfortable with that. Like what in the world? Brother Josh mentioned it this morning, but people are comfortable with sports and all of the hoopla that goes along with that. I'll let you look up the word hoopla. Hoop de hooing and whatnot. People get comfortable with that. But the same men will struggle to clap their hands in the house of the Lord. To lift their voice above a whisper when it's time to worship. Why? Because that's what we decided we're comfortable with. But when we get ourselves aligned in the flow of God, I'm not saying you've got to figure everything out. I'm saying all you've got to do is step into this thing and it doesn't take a genius to figure out which way God's going. Once the service starts, when a preacher's preaching, when the songs are playing, friend, you can just jump on board with that and say, God, I'm going to go through this with you. Whatever you need from me, whatever you want me to do. Friend, I grew up in the old time church where people would get up in the middle of song service and start running around the building. And they would roll on the floor. And they would jump up and down. And they would shout. And they would pray. And they would roll on the floor and cry and seek God. You know why? Not because they were crazy. Not because they were uneducated. It was because they got into the flow of the Holy Ghost. Hey, we're not too smart for all of that. We're not too fancy for all of that. We're not too good for all of that. We just need to get into the flow and agree with God and go where He wants us to go. It's a whole lot easier to go with it than it is to go against it. Yes. It hurts a lot less. Yes. Yes. My grandfather for a time drove a 1970-something Buick Skylark. Called it the pumpkin. It was brown, sort of orange. Had a big V8 engine, two very large doors, a small back seat that young boys could climb into. And I was riding with my grandfather, and uh, we were in a town that we were close to, He's going to an interchange for a highway, and uh, he was 
He was intending to get on to the northbound entrance ramp. And he misjudged. And he ended up getting on to the northbound exit ramp. Had he followed along, he was going to be going south in the northbound lane. <laughs> but once he figured it out, he realized, hey, it's a whole lot safer to go with the flow than it is to go against it. And so the big V8 roared and we jumped over the small cement barrier and we survived. <laughs> because it's better to go with the flow. I remember my senior year of high school. I had a good friend. He was even he's taller than you and bigger than you. He's a big fellow. And uh, um, he wasn't all that fast, but when lunchtime came, <laughs> when lunchtime came, um, we would we would line up behind him, and I would usually get right behind him, and I would put my hand in the middle of his back, and the bell would ring, and we would go charging down the hallway. I mean, it was it was incredible. People would stand to the side and be like, "There they go," and uh, we would just we would just we would just go. Um, you would think the food was great. It was. <laughs> it was. It was just school lunch. I mean, but we wanted to be first. And the problem was, okay, so we had to go down the English Hall and then make a left and then make an immediate right. And then there was a ramp that went down to the doorway to the cafeteria. So once you got around there, if everyone survived, you just... That, then I would normally try to pass him. And get in front of him because um, I didn't need a blocker anymore at that point. The problem was, the problem was, well, and it was really cool because I was small enough to fit completely behind him. So if there was a teacher or someone there that would start yelling, they were always yelling at him and no one could see me. It's fun to be seen. Uh, but anyway, so we would run down the ramp to the cafeteria and you would think that the doors would have opened inward, but they didn't. And so it took tremendous skill and precise timing to make sure that you were enough steps ahead of the oncoming train to be able to stop long enough to get the door open and get through. Mm. I did it once or twice where my foot got in the way and I nearly perished. Um, <laughs> they were sturdy doors and they're still there, of course, I know. <laughs> but the most unlucky person would be the one that was trying to come out when we were trying to go in. Because when the flow starts going this way, you want to be part of it and not against it. I preached to an apostolic Pentecostal church on a Sunday morning. We may as well be part of what is moving in God's direction rather than anybody anywhere trying to go the other way. There is a whole... God gave us the chance to be together on a Sunday morning. God gave us the opportunity to be here and worship and sing together. Friend, we may as well all start going the same direction and give it everything that we got. Friend, God will open the door. You just give it everything that you got and get on board with Him. When God's moving, He's going the right direction. Amen. You won't get lost. Amen. Amen. Some folks are afraid of getting a little carried away. I get it. But the best thing in the world that could ever happen to you or I is to get in the flow yes. in a Pentecostal service um, and get carried away. Because there's a whole lot there's a whole lot that you've been struggling with that you really wish would get carried away from you. Yes. And you wish God would carry all that away. Yes. But all the while you're saying, God, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'll get carried away. <laughs> Did you ever think what might happen mm. if you just jumped on in there with everything that you got mm -hmm. and didn't worry about 
Didn't worry about whether you knew how to swim in it. Didn't worry about whether you could resist it. Didn't worry about whether you could control it. And just let the flow begin to move you. Friend, when you surrender to God, when you surrender to God and begin to agree with what He's doing, what is God doing? God is working to heal. God is working to restore. You say, I'm confused. I don't know what God's doing on any given day. God is doing what's best for you on any given day. When you touch Him, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to try and figure it out. What you have to do is agree with Him and let Him carry you forward into what He has for you. Amen. Oh, somebody clap your hands. Amen. Bartimaeus got carried away when he heard that Jesus was coming. He told him, be quiet, Bartimaeus. You're going to bother people. They said... For crying out loud, would you be quiet? He said, I feel something flowing here yeah. for crying out loud. Yeah. So he cried out all the more. Yeah. Jesus, have mercy on me. Yeah. Friend, if you're seeking God like that, there ain't nobody that's going to stop you. Yeah. That man got into the flow of what was coming his way. And he said, I will not try and go back against this. I'm going to go with it. I don't care what they say. They don't like me anyway. I'm going to find myself at the feet of Jesus. And friend, this man who was blind his whole life left that day seeing and healed for crying out loud. I said he was healed of lifelong blindness for crying out loud. Oh, that somebody would decide for crying out loud on a Sunday morning. I'm going to agree with God today. I'm going to let him move me today. Jesus doesn't stand in church very long, but doesn't respond to the flow. Amen. Psalm 137 talks about him a little bit. Psalm 137 is the, the weeping story of the Israelites in captivity in Babylon. And it says in Psalm 137 that we sat down by the rivers of Babylon and we hung our harps in the willows. And our captors required of us a song. And they said, sing the songs of Zion here. He said, they, this is literally what was happening. They, they were in a captive situation. They could not break out. They were surrounded. They were literally, they were literally, they could not move. And their captors came to them and said, hey, how about you start playing some of them old gospel songs like you used to do back home? How about you get somebody out here and hammer on that keyboard for a while and make us some music up in here. It's going to be a good time. And they said, the people of God said, how can we sing like that here? Because we're having a rough day. How can we praise God now? Because we're having a bad time of it. We sing like that in Jerusalem, but not in Babylon. In other words, we sing like that when times are good, but when times are tough. We sit here at the willows and weep. We hang up our harps. They sat down on the riverbank. They said, we can't sing like that here. Friends, there's always going to be some weeping willows near the flow. Yes. I've seen it more times than what I care to think about. A mighty move of God. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, other times conferences and everything else and God is moving and working in a mighty way and there's people there, the, the miracles happening people being filled with the Holy Ghost and there's somebody over there with his you know just arms folded and I don't feel a thing yeah. well no you probably don't because you hung up your harp right you spent all week harping on everything you don't like then you come to church and hang up your harp <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he who falls down gets up a whole lot faster than he who sits down. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. He who falls down gets up just a whole lot faster than the fellow that sits down. 
Yes. The Bible says they sat down on the back. They didn't, they didn't slip and fall. They sat down. They, were, they said, we've had enough of this. And they sat down on God while there was a mighty flow moving before them. Friend of mine, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have sit down church in 2021. Oh, but I want to get back up and sing his praises one more time. If there's a flow of God Yesterday was whatever tomorrow brings. I want to be in the middle of whatever God has. If you get out in the middle of the flow, you may very well find him at your house. Scripture says of a short man named Zacchaeus. He saw the flood coming through his town and he ran out ahead. It's like I can see revival coming. And so he prepared for it. That becomes a powerful church. When you just know that there's going to be a visitation of Jesus in your city like never had been before. He said, I see him coming down the road and I don't want to miss my chance. I don't want to miss my opportunity to be part of the movement of God. So he went out ahead of it all. And he moved himself into an elevated, solitary position to wait on Jesus. My God, what kind of revival we can have. When people would rather climb a tree to see Jesus than they would sit on their couch and watch something else. Amen. Ordinary fellas they used to talk about, they say they'd, they'd, they'd climb a tree to get in a fight if they could stand on the ground and just be happy. That's the way we ought to be in our pursuit of God. Willing to climb a tree to be able to get into the middle of what Jesus is doing. And the flow passed by. And Jesus looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, come down here. I need to be in your house. I need to be in your house. He anticipated the flow. He anticipated what Jesus might do. And he positioned himself for the maximum impact. I'm preaching to us about getting into the flow. The flow produces healing in life. Ezekiel 47 and 9 says, it shall come to pass that everything that lives, which moves whithersoever the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Amen. Pastor was here, he'd be shouting hallelujah. <laughs> great multitudes of brook trout and brown trout and whatever else. There's a lot of fish. Because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live where the river comes. Everything shall live where the river comes. It's a place of perpetual abundance. Ezekiel 47 and 12, we read it. and said the river upon the banks there on the sides, this side and that shall grow trees for food whose leaf shall not fade. Doesn't matter how dry it gets everywhere else. When every other avenue of life dries up, there's still going to be something flowing from the house of God. Yes. When every other hope, yes. when every other dream, when every other person, place, and thing has dried up, you can find yourself at the house of God and know that there is a perpetual source there that will sustain you through every season. Yes. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. There is more than what you need. That old song that says, My God is more than enough. He shall supply all your need. Friend, it's not just a song. It's true. God's got more than what you need. He's got everything you need and then some. He's got as much as you need and then a whole bunch more. He can bless you good and then He can bless you even better. He can take care of you and then He can take you to glory. Friend, there's more. There's more that flows from the house of God than what we can begin to contain or comprehend. Brings forth new fruit according to His months. In every 
single season, there's something new in God. People who live a boring life are not in the flow. Now, you may live a very safe life, and in many ways a very contented life. But if you're in the flow with God, you will not become bored. Amen. Things are always changing. There's always... And the God, as if God wants us to become comfortable here. That's so much what we pray for. We do. Sorry. Sort of. But that's not really what He's after. Right. Like God gives us so much good stuff. Way Amen. more than what we give Him credit Amen. for. Way more than what we give Him credit yes. for. Yes. And still we like to just be a little bit more comfortable. He said, I'm going to give you something new. I'm going to give you something new. Every month, there's a new fruit. There's a new blessing. May not be the way you liked it, but there's going to be something new for you Amen. in every season. Amen. Because these waters issued out of the sanctuary and their leaf was for medicine. Their leaf was for medicine. Let's stand together today. I realize I preached a long time already. Oh, John saw a river flowing in heaven. Crystal clear and pure. Called it the river of water of life. There were no weeping willows there. The only tree he talks about the tree of life. But the river that John talks about flows in heaven. It sounds a whole lot like the river that Ezekiel talked about. It flows from the house of God. So there's going to be a tree of life there that every month yields its fruit. And the leaves of that tree for the healing of the nations. We live in a world, in a time, in a culture that is screaming for healing, for prevention, for security. looking all different directions, looking to medicine, and all different avenues of, of the world to be able to secure all of that. When all along, God's been saying, from the house of the Lord, there is a river. That the whole purpose of it is for life, and healing. Amen. It's for life and for healing. I'm not saying today that if you come to church, you're never going to get sick again. I'm not saying that if you come to church, you're never uh, going to contract cancer or some other kind of disease. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that what flows from God is for healing. It's for restoration. It's for life. It's for life beyond what we understand. It's for healing capacity beyond what we really get in this flesh. And it always starts at the same place. Many rivers and earth, it's hard to really nail, nail down where they start. They just all a bunch of stuff coming together from here and there and finally comes together and it's a river. In Genesis, there was a river that flowed out of Eden. It started in the presence of God. Ezekiel saw a river. It started at the house of God. It flowed out of the sanctuary. John saw a river from heaven. It started at the throne of God. The flow always begins with the uncontainable presence of God and flows outward. It's powerful. Jesus said, talking about the Holy Ghost. He said, when you get the Holy Ghost and you let it flow through you, 
It's going to be like a river of life, a river of living water. It's going to, what's it going to, it's going to flow out. It's not going to stagnate in you. It's not intended to be something that just falls upon you and washes over you. But it's, it's rather instead supposed to be something that begins in you. The source is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, just like it was in Ezekiel's vision. The Spirit, the presence of God in the temple, in you and I, the temple of God. And then it flows out of us. For us, it happens in a physical way as we lift our voice and begin to speak in other tongues. We're yielding to the flow of the Holy Ghost. That's all we're doing. When we're filled with the Holy Ghost, Amen. we're getting in the flow. Amen. We're turning our boat in the direction that God is going, and we're saying, I'm not going to try and back paddle on this. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, God, the way you want me to. Yes. It's so much our habit to try and push back and go the other way, and we, we get into the current of it, and we get concerned about what's going to happen if God really, if we let him take over completely. I'll tell you what will happen if you let God take over completely. He'll fill you with his spirit until you overflow. And you'll be like every other person in the book of Acts and in the apostolic church from then until now. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you yield to that flow, you will speak in other tongues as the spirit gives you utterance. Does it matter what you sound like? Absolutely not to me. Amen. Does it seem strange to some people? I think it probably does. Is it different than anything else in the world? It absolutely is. Yes. yes. Is it the most powerful thing that you'll ever experience? Oh, yes, yes. it is. Yes, it is. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to fight through it. What you have to do is yield to it. Amen. In Brazil, South America, there's several rivers, large rivers that come together and join the Amazon River that pushes out into the southern Atlantic Ocean. And... There is, there is, there is so much, there is so much power there, so much force and energy that it literally pushes fresh water 200 miles out into the ocean. Like the, it's, it's literally fresh water that you could drink 200 miles from shore. That's the kind of flow the power of the flow that's in that river. Can you imagine how much power? You want to talk about turning the tides of our world? There's power from the house of God. You, 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 you're worried about the rising tide of things that you're afraid of, things that you're fearing, things that you're struggling with. Friend, just get into the flow. It doesn't matter if it's high tide or low tide or what the storm does. There is nothing that can turn back a flow like that. Friend, there is nothing that can undo Calvary. There is nothing that can undo what Jesus has done for you. There is nothing. There is nothing that can undo your salvation experience with God when you get into the flow with Him. So I invite you this morning as the music plays, we'll pause our live feed. I invite you to come to this altar and get in the flow this morning. I invite you to come. I invite you to pray today. Somebody touch God this morning and yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. Somebody come and yield yourself to the Lord and begin to flow with God. Stop trying to make your way upstream and just go with God this morning. Get a hold of this. Get a hold of what God